you, you know, we, we talked about uh, privacy and and how it means something different for parents than it does kids, or maybe yeah. the sense of privacy yes. is completely false for children. Right. But a mommy blogger named April writes, my oldest daughter will be 12 later this month. My youngest will be nine. I remember needing my privacy as a girl, and I don't want to deprive my daughters of that. But at the same time, I, of course, want to be sure that I don't give her too much space. So how do you find the right balance between kind of keeping an eye on kids, right, but also sure. respecting really their hard. need to yeah. kind of be independent? Yeah. This is one of the things I really asked children about and teenagers about for the new book. And this is what this is how I, I've come to see it. That privacy is like a treasure. It's like a jewel that you have as a parent that you ha you really have to value. Because if you are going to violate privacy, if you're going to without, like, it's going to come across as not respecting your child. And it's also going to be a trigger for them to say, then I'm going to start hiding things from you. So if you violate privacy, if you start, if you just say, I am going to absolutely 100%, you have no privacy, then kids are going to do a lot to try and create it. So I think, first of all, everybody needs, especially as they're getting older, that you do need a, a place to feel private. And I think that's really important. At the same time, there ha there's, no, you know, there's no such thing as like complete freedom. There's no such thing as limited, as complete privacy. And so I think for parents that they need to say, look, I don't want to be going into your, you know, texting, into your phone all the time. I don't want to be doing all of this stuff. But there's a couple times when I'm going to think that I have to. One is if I see a huge amount of change of a difference of friends. And I don't care if it's, see, sometimes parents think if they have a lot of friends or if they change friends and those friends are super popular, that that's a good thing. Any kind of big change is something that I want parents to actually pay attention to. So that would be one like time. Like going from no friends to a million friends. Yeah, like what, or and so what's very going on with that? A very different group of friends. So that would be one thing that I would think about. The second is if you are a parent of a high school child, especially when it was a lot of friends, and for whatever reason you are going out of town, I would check the texts right before you leave of your child. To make sure they're not having a risky business situation while you're gone? Pretty much. Really? Yeah. But what, uh, is that why? Yeah. What if, you know, I have had friends who, I have had friends who check their kids email, I am, mm -hmm. whatever, whatever, right, right. and just they just don't tell them. Right. And you can now, do that. Now, is that really bad? I mean, it is, is that well, here's so the dishonest? Thing. It's just, it is dishonest, but also it's that risk of, like, if they find out that you've been doing that, then that, that's feeling of, like, I'm going to have to do something to really hide, right? It's that motivation of, like, you've done something that I, that feels like a betrayal to me. And so mm -hmm. I'm going to now do something so that you cannot, you can, so that they're, so I but will maintain my privacy. a lot of them are able to keep this from their kids. You well, know, they might you, say, say, oh yeah, I'm going to a party. Frank's parents aren't right. Frank, Frank right. I don't know where I came with that name. No, no kid is <laughs> no kids Frank anymore. Right, right. Frankie's parents right. aren't home this right. weekend and I'm going to go to a party. Right. This house, do you want to come? My friend would see it and say, what are you doing tonight? And, right. you know, well, I'm going to call the parents and make right. sure they're there. I mean, exactly. it, it actually gives you better tools. Exactly. But it does feel slightly. It is. It is like the thing I just want parents to realize is it's taking a risk that if you get caught, then the kid can focus being self-righteous about the violation of privacy and not on the content of their own behavior. That's right. When you're talking to kids about the problem, whatever the problem is at hand, they're going to really latch on to things like you took away my privacy but when the, the content, right? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. That's an important issue. But at the same time, can't you say, you know what, this is a privilege, yes. you know, and occasionally I'm going to check in. Absolutely. Because to me, if you sort of leave it amorphous and ambiguous, then maybe they'll just feel like, gee, I have to be careful. I'm going to, I'm going to be a better self monitor right. of how I right. use this technology. Well, I think the best way to do this actually is, and it's changing so fast that I wouldn't have been able to say this like six or nine months ago. I think the best thing to do is you say, look, I want you to have a privacy. I want you to have your own life, but I reserve the right to check if I feel that I need to. But you know what? I don't even need to really use your phone because I can go on the website of our service provider and I can check all of your activity on there. So I don't really need to look on your phone and then just leave them at that. 